Genetically modified organisms. What are they? Genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, are organisms whose genetic makeup has been altered by means of genetic engineering. Which can mean a lot of things, most of which are beyond me. But in this instance, I'm talking about taking a gene that expresses a desired trait in one organism and inserting it into the genetic makeup of another organism so that it shows so that it shows that desired trait. And while genetic engineering is not at all a simple process, I'll try to explain it roughly with about five steps. First, I'll have to extract the DNA of the organism, a single strand, possibly using gel electrophoresis to separate it from another DNA, from other DNA. After extracting, I'll have to find the gene I want and I'll clone it probably multiple times so that I can keep working with it. But while I'm doing that, I'm also pretty much accommodating the gene so that I can combine it with a DNA sequence from the plant, making recumbent DNA and preparing it for transformation, which is just a process of putting the gene into targeted organisms, such as using a gene gun or agrobacterium. But once that happens, and you have successfully transferred the gene and its desired trait into the new organism, It'll be time to interbreed the transgenic, transgenic organism with its ordinary counterparts to create a species that is entirely home to the new trait. And although it's obviously a much more complex and delicate process, that's in effect how to genetically modify an organism. But now I want to talk about an example of a GMO. I want to talk about genetically modified rice. And because rice is such an important crop for people around the world, a lot of research and work is put into making it better. One of the first instance, instances of making rice a GM, a genetically modified organism, is producing its resistance to bacterial blight. Blight is a pretty serious rice disease. In some cases, it could lead to the loss of an entire field. And if we consider that it occurs heavily in Asia, where most farmers are poor and don't have access to any means of counteracting the disease, the advent of this resistance is highly important. How do they make the rice resistant? You know, first was just a simple act of observing a wild species of rice and its resistance to blight. From there, it took 12 years of traditional breeding to create a variety of rice that was useful in farming. This was all done by a group of researchers with the International Rice Research Institute, or IRRI. But this is just the motivation behind a slightly better story. The story of the first successful cloning of a disease-resistant gene in any plant. The gene XA21, which was identified as a specific gene by the group of researchers at the IRRI, was successfully found, taken, and cloned by another group of researchers in California. And these researchers would then go on to use a gene gun to transform their cloned DNA into rice cells of a variety of rice that is highly susceptible to blight. And while it worked, the rice plants were resistant and they even passed on the resistance to the next generation. The benefits of this are potentially enormous. If you could pass on this gene to other varieties of rice, more commonly used varieties of rice, you would be decreasing crop loss and theoretically saving uncountable lives. And the only problem I could think arising from this is a GMO scare. Because if we consider what happened with golden rice crops, which are another form of genetically modified rice in the Philippines, where activists broke through fences only to destroy an entire field, then we should consider the fact that not everyone will be on board with genetically modified rice. But if I had the skill set, I would make the rice immune to as many diseases as possible. I want to push for, for more than just blight resistant, resistance. GMOs are at the forefront scientific advances and controversial debates. 
and once again they should be they should pretty simple they should be pretty simple to understand just differences in the genome of an organism which results in desired traits but if people can cannot see past their fears and lay their eyes upon other people who desperately need help then the potential these advancements have to help those people will simply never reach them